not just the, uh, the Ukrainian diaspora professors, but the, uh, his, well, the one example that I mentioned in my book is uh, his name is Timothy Snyder, he's a uh, Yale University history professor. So the, in the next paragraph, it starts with, as both sides have their live factory operating in full capacity 24-7, navigating through the fog of misinformation is more than challenging than ever. What do you think is the biggest misinformation that we have in the West? Uh, uh, well, the biggest myth is that if we keep up with this, uh, this war for like supporting Ukraine by me, uh, <clears throat> That eventually Russia is gonna crumble. There's gonna be like a, a like a, the Russian Revolution 2.0. The, the angry mobs are gonna storm Kremlin like how, how they did uh, uh, the October Revolution, and keep and they're gonna like take out Putin and his cronies and keep keep their heads on a silver platter to us and tell us how sorry they are. That do you really see that happening? I mean, I just. I just don't. That's like that comes from the people that sees Russia and well, Slavs in, in a uh, Western lenses or point of view. They just don't understand what kind of people Slavs are. <laughs> I Thank laugh you. at it every time. Every time I hear that kind of opinion, and what's also funny about it is that the it's, the, it's actually these historians, like the the, prof the professors, they're actually beating the war drum the loudest, not just the. Uh, not just the, the Ukrainian diaspora professors, but the uh, his, uh, the one example that I mentioned in my book is uh, his name is Timothy Snyder. He's a Yale University history professor, yeah. and he, he went as far as writing this most disgusting article that I've ever read in my life. Uh, it's titled "A like, Gratitude to Ukraine." It's on it's on his Substack. It's basically saying thank you, Ukraine, for dying for our for us and. He also says this, this, this little funny things like, oh, sorry, we stole your Christmas carol and Americanized it. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> it's the, the one, for, for those who don't know, it's the one that's played in the, whole, the movie Home Alone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I forgot the name of the Ukrainian, but... Anyways, so we have these academics who's basically being what I call war cheerleader. They're saying, they, they just keep regurgitating this message. Oh, there's just... No other alternative. You just gotta keep supporting the Ukrainian war for, for as long as it takes. And at, at what cost? Like, I'm at, I'm asking that question. Like, at what cost? Of like, like of like five hundred thousand or, or or a million or two million or three million Ukrainian deaths? Is, is this really worth it? Like, is this is this is this wise or is this righteous? And are we like, are we willing to make Ukraine sacrifice so much to get whatever we want out of this conflict? That's something that I really want people to start asking. And unfortunately, I really don't see a lot of questioning going on. As we all, I, mean, I, see, I see people who are pissed off because they, they, their, uh, their standard of living has diminished significantly ever since the war escalated. Oh.